Today we'll be working on something that is much larger than a phone. This Xbox One S has had someone try to forcefully insert the HDMI cable, or possibly carry around the console in a backpack while the cables are connected. This is a horrible idea, and this is why a large amount of consoles come into my shop. You should always disconnect cables when transporting your console, or better yet, just leave the console in one spot. It isn't a Nintendo Switch, and it isn't designed to be super portable. The damage is clearly visible when looking at the back side of the device. The HDMI port looks like it's been split open, and feels loose when you try to insert a cable. Opening the device isn't too challenging, but certainly sounds like you're breaking it apart. Each plastic clip needs to be snapped open before prying the bottom panel off. The warranty void area has a large plastic block that helps keep it clipped into place. Once the panel is removed, there are six extra long bright green hex screws that hold the metal shell to the plastic exterior. These are labeled on the metal housing as F screws, or frame screws. With these removed, the plastic top shell can be removed from the rest of the console. There are two daughter boards on the console. One is under the front panel and it has the eject and power buttons. There are four hex screws holding it on. Along with the side of the console, you'll find the Wi-Fi and pairing board. It has three of those same screws holding it in place. Half the metal frame can now be lifted off to reveal all the internal components. The hard drive will be the first to come out. These Foxconn branded SATA connectors are very poorly designed and have a tendency to come right off the board, leaving the SATA pins attached but fully exposed. I'll need to carefully reattach this plastic housing over the pins without bending them up. This is much easier than dealing with re-soldering the connector and fixing Foxconn's mistakes. The disk drive is the next component to take out. It also has one of the awful SATA connectors, along with the basic power connector. Finally, the internal power supply is free to come out, after some prying to unclip the connector. For some reason, Microsoft was under the impression that these consoles would just fall to pieces, so every connector is tighter and stiffer than any other device you might take apart. There's a single metal retaining clip that holds the front USB port in place, though it really doesn't do anything, even the job it was designed for. I'll remove that and then the large black plastic bracket from the front of the fan and heatsink. This plastic bar serves only to help the frame screws not hit the main board. Under the board we find the X clamp. This may be the part that trips up most technicians when disassembling the device. It's tempting to use the board as leverage when prying these off, but the entire area is covered in tiny resistors and capacitors that we wouldn't want breaking off. Grabbing the end of the X clamp with pliers and twisting it counterclockwise will release it from the metal post. After unclipping two of these, the other two should come off relatively easily. Now the heatsink is free to come up and off of the board. This is an important step as any time you disassemble the console, you have a good chance to reapply thermal compound. In most cases, the original compound has long since dried up and isn't moving heat as efficiently as it could. Now we get to see why the HDMI port no longer functions. This one was simply no longer attached to the board. The port has four metal feet that are soldered in, and in this case it looks like the port was forcibly ripped up from the board and snapped the metal posts on either side. I'll use a heat gun set at about 450 degrees Celsius to melt the solder joints and remove the legs. Grabbing some solder wick, I'll remove the old solder from the pads. Switching over to the microscope, I'll lay down some flux across the pads and then tin them with fresh, reliable solder. I'll spray some 99% isopropyl alcohol over them and use a Q-tip to clean off the leftover flux. Here's yet another problem with this console. The HDMI port was hit so violently that the far left solder pad has been ripped entirely off the PCB. There is no longer anything for the pin on the port to connect to. I'll scrape the line that ran to that pad to expose some copper, tin it with solder, then align a jumper wire that will attach the pins on the HDMI port. With the jumper safely attached, I'll cover the other pins in a layer of fresh flux and press each of them down with the soldering iron. Since the pads are already tinned with solder, the pins should connect easily. 
Using tweezers, I'll probe each pin to make sure it attached securely. You'll notice that pin 4 didn't seat properly and wiggles around a bit. I'll grab my iron again and press that one down, then double check the pins again. Sometimes the heat from the iron can loosen surrounding pins. With all pins attached, it's time to reassemble the console and fire it up to see if we've successfully repaired it. Everything is looking good, the device is displaying in full 1080 and sending audio correctly. Thanks for joining me, leave some comments and questions below and I'll see you next time.